All right, hey, what's up, folks? Uh, Earthmaster here, checking in Sunday night, about 8:08 .08 p.m. West Coast time here on Mother's Day, May 10th, 2020, and uh, gonna do a, just a recap of earthquake activity today, um, and any newer earthquake activity that has been reported from the USGS. Uh, looks like a couple have been there, a 5.8 just south of Japan region. Um, and also it looks like a little 4.6 followed up that uh, earthquake as well. 5.8, pretty good size. Almost uh, borderline 6 there. Shooting down uh, towards the Indonesia Islands area. Flurry of older earthquake activity about ready to drop off the globe there. But there was. Uh, looks, like that, uh, looks like that was a 5.6 there. Kind of a newer earthquake. So increased earthquake activity out there on the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire into the uh, Indonesia area, also out here along the west coast here. So Southern California getting hit by a 4.5 earthquake earlier. Did an update video in regards to that. That has since been followed up by a, a flurry of uh, earthquakes here. Now this is not showing all the earthquake activity in Southern California. This is only showing 2.5 and above. I'm going to show you this other map here uh, in regards to the um, smaller magnitudes that are taking place. If I can get that to pop up, there we go. Uh, once again, 2.5. You can see there was a 3.0 following that 4.5 a short time later. But we need to go over here to the uh, all magnitude scale in order to see the, uh, let's go over here, one day all magnitudes. The uh, flurry of activity I'm talking about here. And this is on the San Jacinto fault system down here, an area of uh, potential to create some uh, moderate to large quakes up to about a 6.6 .6 or so. We'll go over to that here in a little bit uh, as far as the history uh, of seismic activity in this region goes. But right now we'll zoom in here and take a look at this flurry of quakes here. Roughly, uh, we're looking at about 30, well, 41. Could have sworn said 39 just a split second ago. 41 earthquakes here in this region of Southern California. Kind of out there in the desert area, right? You got, uh, well, I don't, I've never been down there in this region here. It looks like the West Meza Superstition Hills over here. This is well west and to the south of the Salton Sea region a little bit. Um, by, uh, ooh, what do we got there? Maybe about 15 miles or so to the southwest here. Um, this San Jacinto fault system is a, uh, a major player in relieving stress between the uh, North American and the Pacific Plate, secondary to the San Andreas fault system, which runs over here um, well to the north and to the east here. You can see that dark solid line there indicating uh, the major plate boundary there between the, the two plates, North American and once again the Pacific, the good old San Andreas fault system right there. I know last week we had a little bit of swarming activity down there, um, out there in the lake area on the Brawley Seismic Zone. That's this other extension of the San Andreas Fault System that kind of runs further south into Baja California region there. Um, and then it kind of, what's this other one called here? Imperial Fault, that's right. Runs into the Imperial Fault. But this is, these are all pretty much somewhat connected. I'm not for sure why they want to rename these different names, but... Uh, it is what it is. So the San Jacinto fault system here, and you can see this line here. I'll go ahead and highlight this here, this area. San Jacinto fault. This is the uh, Coyote Creek fault. Borrego Mountain section here. A lot of historical seismic activity in this region here. Uh, last one roughly around 1986, I believe. Pretty sure that's it. Let me double check here. 1987, I believe. There we go. November 24, 1987, when a 6.5 earthquake struck in, out there in that area, causing, uh, well, not a whole lot of damage, but some extreme shaking for the epicenter region here. I'm going to have to show you guys that um, on this specific item right here. There we go. That's what I meant to pull up. So this area right here is pretty much the area that you're seeing on the um, on the USGS map right here. We can even back this up a little bit. 
Ah, man, I just got a... I don't know what the heck. I just got a major itch up my nose. What the heck? I think it's like a spider web or something. Um, yeah, so we'll back this up here a little bit and show you guys the, uh, the region here and that location, specific location there uh, in retrospect to the image I'm showing you uh, of the earthquake 6.5 magnitude quake there. You can see this area of rupture back in uh, November 24th, 1987. And this has been a long time since we've had a major earthquake out there on this specific section here. Intervals between major earthquakes are, well, they're a lot sooner than the, um, how many years now, 1987, 32 years or so, right? 32 years since the, since the last major quake out there in that specific section. Normal intervals of large recurrence earthquakes here run about 18, 5, 14, 5, 12, 14, and 19 years. We're looking at double the amount of time almost since we've seen uh, a major earthquake out there in this section, 1987, when we've seen that 6.5 there. And uh, showing extreme shaking there, very heavy shaking uh, for the folks that may live around that area. But uh, as you go out and through the mountains there, just uh, some moderate, light to moderate shaking into the San Diego region and other areas um, further away from the epicenter. Those mountains there are creating a, kind of like a blockage, if you will, of uh, seismic waves. But uh, nonetheless, some definitely good shaking out there from that last major earthquake there 32 years ago, uh, back in 1987. Now there is another fault system out here uh, a different segment, if you will, of the San Jacinto fault system here that's a little bit further to the north. Uh, this one here back in April 9th, 1968. A little bit sooner, right? Not, not uh, 32 years there. Uh, this one, a 6.6 .6 magnitude quake here. Um, showing, you know, the extreme shaking there that it picked up or that people felt in this region. And once again, just some light to moderate shaking over around the San Diego and throughout the other areas here. But, uh, you know, the specific section out here, um, the San Jacinto Fault System is definitely overdue for a, a pretty good sized quake here. Not a big, you know, not a major devastating earthquake, but uh, it's definitely been a long overdue uh, for a, a good size 6.0 out there on this section of the San Jacinto fault system so look for that uh, in the near future no doubt uh, we're definitely beyond that window of uh, inter intervals there a little bit of specific information uh, in regards to the uh, San Jacinto fault system here let's see if I can straighten that out a little bit that's pretty tall I mean that if I got a magnifying glass that's pretty small there hold on let me fix that uh, on my side it looked normal but uh, hold on you know it's it's live YouTubing here right so gotta gotta bear with me here there we go okay we're getting there so it also shows the fault system over here to the right on the upper right hand corner you can see the segment uh, of, of topic there the topic of discussion there the San Jacinto fault um, this area right here as I've mentioned in the updated video it's a major strike slip fault zone that runs through the uh, the following communities there of San Bernardino Riverside San Diego and Imperial counties in of course Southern California it's a uh, pretty much a component of the larger San Andreas system um, and together they like I mentioned relieved the majority of the stress between the Pacific and the North American plates there um, yeah lot, lots of information on this here uh, and it does mention the intervals there that I mentioned uh, starting back in 1899 the intervals uh, for good sized quakes there uh, was 18, 5, 14, 5, 12, 14, and 19 years. And they mentioned here that there has not been another strong earthquake uh, since 1987 there. 32 years. So it's, you know, it's coming. There's definitely a good sized quake there coming pretty soon. Uh, a lot more information, uh, technical specs on this, on this, uh, fault system out here not going to go into it all uh, but there is a, a 
a lot of interesting information here about it, that's for sure. Let's see, I was going to highlight some of these here. Yeah, this goes into some super technical details here, but uh, I just wanted to point out the, uh, you know, the lack of of stronger of a strong earthquake since that 1987 quake. Uh, you know, even though this four pointer may not be necessarily a sign of something coming, a bigger one, but it's always good to. Uh, you know, pay attention to the, uh, to possibly some four quakes, four shakers, if you will. So if you want to check that out on Wikipedia, there's a lot of information on it. I could go on and on about this specifics of it. We're not going to do that, but, uh, you know, it's, a. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here. bit more what I say 41 yep 41 earthquakes here and most of these as I mentioned have been uh, in the small range right lots of lots of ones some twos in there the biggest aftershock was that 3.0 um, and of course the main shaker the 4.5 so far but uh, you know it's an area to watch folks especially with it being long overdue for uh, at least a, a mid six out there in this section of Southern California uh, further up north here it's looking pretty uh, Pretty absent of earthquakes, even up here around the Ridgecrest area as we move for further north um, and away from the San Andreas Fault System. Just some sporadic uh, earthquake activity. This is just pretty, uh, pretty much micro quakes out there right now. Um, shooting up here towards Northern California, of course, a cluster of quakes up here near the Clear Lake area. This is uh, kind of near Geysers. This is an area in Northern California that's. Uh, um, very active and oh, what's those things called that people like to jump in the mud and pay big money to soak in for hours at a time uh, geysers right I don't know I don't do that stuff but it's a hot spot uh, there's a lot of uh, businesses businesses up there that uh, that uh, take advantage of the mud and the uh, hydrothermal activity and uh, of course customers like it they eat it up they pay big money to go sit in some hot mud <laughs> so northern california pretty quiet up there the triple junction looking extraordinarily quiet uh into oregon and washington absent of earthquake activity uh idaho we can check that out real quick there was a flurry and a swarm of uh threes last night uh today not so much quieting down with the just a couple three pointers uh throughout the day today in the state of idaho no earthquakes shown up yet in the Yellowstone National Park region. Of course, last night I did point out that there was a swarm of uh, small earthquakes striking up there. Uh, it has calmed down a little bit. Um, not, it has not picked up as far as like into a full-blown mega swarm in Yellowstone National Park, which is a good thing. So activity up there at the moment dying off. And of course, USGS not reporting any of it. Uh, and once again, those are small microquakes. Eventually, they'll get to them. But I understand, you know, the situation that we're in and the the, uh, the busyness of everyone. So, yeah, a lot of earthquakes up there in Alaska still. Of course, that's a major player when it comes to plate tectonics and the, and shifting of the Earth there. Other than that, folks, um, you know, I just wanted to touch base there on the San Jacinto Fault there and just to keep a keep a eye out on that area you know we're looking at 32 years of a uh, lack of a larger release of pressure yes a 4.0 could potentially um, delay that six point or six pointer you know the expected six pointer but uh, then again maybe not it's a very super complex system down there that uh, you know it's partially understood but not fully understood and uh, of course you know, I do not believe man can predict or completely uh, understand Mother Nature because Mother Nature is going to do what she wants to do, when she wants to do it, and there's nothing we can do about it. So the best thing to do is just be prepared. And um, yeah, that's it. So anyway, folks, I'm going to jump off here. I hope everyone had a great Mother's Day. Just got through with the dinner. 
over uh, at my mom's there. So, you know, if you're lucky enough to have your mom alive, definitely appreciate uh, every minute that you get to uh, spend with her. Uh, because you only have one mom, right? Anyone, fo anyway, folks, have a good night. Uh, hopefully that'll be it for this evening. Take care. We'll see you guys out there on the Earthquake Live 3D stream. Peace out.